Could the Mavericks actually be bringing Dennis Smith Jr. back to Dallas? Let's go. And is Derek Lively ready to take the reins of being the starting center next season? Those are the topics here on Dallas Mavericks today. He's Jeffrey Cooperstein. I'm Harrison Graham. Let's go. So the Mavericks have done a lot of their heavy lifting throughout free agency. They get Clay Thompson. They get rid of Tim Hardaway, get Quentin Grimes. They sign Najee Marshall uh, and then lose Derek Jones. But, Coop, they still got at least one roster spot, potentially two if they cut A.J. Lawson, who's on a non-guaranteed yep. deal. And Tim McMahon uh, said on uh, that Hoop Collective, whatever show he does for ESPN today, with that Wendy. Dana, yeah, with our good pal Wendy, that uh, Dennis Smith Jr. is on the Mavericks' radar. Yeah, here's exactly what he said. Basically, he was asked. He asked a Mavericks source about the the possibility of signing Dennis Smith Jr. and he didn't get shut down. So the Mavs are certainly. Uh, at least open to it, if not exploring the idea of bringing Dennis Smith back. Obviously, he was the ninth pick, overall pick for the Mavericks in the 2017 NBA draft. It didn't work out here for various reasons, but he's gone on to be a somewhat of a journeyman, spent time in Portland, spent time in Charlotte, had last year with the Nets, and he could be a decent fit on this Mavericks roster. Yeah, and a couple things to remember. One, the Mavericks could either sign to a vet minimum or up to $4.4 million with the remaining money they have in the mid-level exception. Two, Dennis Smith is a completely different player than the one not the same they guy. drafted. He's not a offensive, really only athletic freak that can score. He's now a guy that's not going to give you a ton offensively. He's still explosive and can get to the rim and is good in the open court, but he's not a good jump shooter. He can distribute a little bit still, three and a half assists per game last year. But what he has done, Coop, to make himself last in the NBA is now he's a pest defensively. Absolutely. He's got some size at 6'3 or so. He's pretty long. Obviously, that athleticism helps. He can stay in front of guys. And uh, he's very good defensively. Now, ideally, if you were going to add a guard, you'd like to add one who's 6'5", 6'6". He's, probably more, he's more like 6'3". But, you know, you put him in that grouping with uh, Exum and Hardy as your kind of bench guards. I think he could carve out a little role as a defensive stopper. I, I don't know if he'd be consistently in the rotation, but over the course of a reg regular season, Coop, I certainly think he could help. I absolutely do as well. He would be your best point of attack defender right there on the ball. And I, I think that he could give you decent minutes as a true number one point guard, backup point guard running that second unit. He's a little different with, than Dante Exum, where I think Exum can play the one, but he's more of a two. I think Dennis Smith is a one and would play the one with the Mavericks. And we obviously know him and Luca are friends. Um, it didn't work out well as far as on-court fit the first time, but that was for various reasons. Dennis wasn't uh, exactly the player he is now, the whole Ray Carlisle thing and this and that. But we do well, know that these two get along. Well, and Dennis wanted to be the man, and he had a pretty good rookie year for the Mavericks. And when they drafted Luca, it was apparent very quickly that this team was going to be Luca's team. Yep. And I don't think Dennis was mature enough to handle that. I don't think they could really mesh for those reasons. And so, you know, Dennis, you know, essentially just left the team because Basically. it just wasn't going well. He had, a, uh, he had a triple-double in New York the night before he was traded. That is true. That is true. And uh, who knows how it would have played out if he stayed long-term. But give him credit. I mean, he was on the verge of being out of the league at one point. Yep. And he's, he's found a role in this league. And... Look, you can never have enough defensive guards and athleticism, and he provide, provides both. So I, I'd be interested. What about you? Should the Mavs sign Dennis Smith Jr. type S for sign, P for pass? I wonder if he'd be a guy that would command that 4.4 or if he'd be in the vet minimum. Um, it's hard to know, uh, but uh, I'd be cool if he fit into either of those buckets. I, I just think it'd be a cool story to bring him back and under his new uh, development as a player and his, the, a guy who's just completely different than the guy that they traded away in December or in January of 2019. Yeah, and you wonder if you know the Mavs have done a good job of developing over the years. Like, could he find a jump shot here? Maybe. Uh, I don't think you're really banking on that, but. Uh, uh, but uh, that'd be nice. And thank you guys so much, by the way. We hit 29,000 yes, subscribers here on the channel, and the road to 30K starts now. I think we're like 800 and change away, so uh, we appreciate it. If you haven't joined this family already, please do so. Let's get to 30,000 subscribers ASAP here on Dallas Mavericks today. 
All right, let's talk Derek Lively to McMahon, also saying that uh, Lively is expected to take the reins of being the starting center next season, which he started a lot this year, he too, did. Coop, especially early in the year, and even some games until they went to the Gafford starting lineup, which obviously jump-started this team, and they went on a great run. Uh, I think the arrow is point, pointing sky high for this guy, whereas, you know, Daniel Gafford, obviously, with this team and more time with Luka, like, he can improve some things but like Gafford is what he is which is a solid starter but would be an awesome backup yep, whereas exactly. Lively has a chance to be he could be an all-star in this league I don't know if he's going to be that now or in the next couple of years but he's ascending whereas Gafford is kind of you kind of know what he is he's he's not going to really add more to his game uh which is fine he's a very good center in this league and if he's your backup that is excellent yeah I I just think this moves make complete sense on all fronts. Derek Lively, fantastic rookie season. He is your center of the future, hopefully for the next decade or so, as he continues to ascend through the ranks of the NBA. And like you said, Gafford's probably like a middle of the road starter, but he probably, he might be the best backup big in the NBA. I mean, yeah. you have the likes of Nas Reed and, and that, I think he would be in that category. It's nothing against him whatsoever that they would make this move. I think it just makes more sense to have your best player in the starting lineup and have your best five available out there. So Gafford coming off the bench, uh, I still think, you know, the minute the minute split would probably be something along the lines of 28 20 to 22 ish for those guys and they're both going to play a lot. Yeah, and again, it I don't know how much this really matters cuz Lively was playing a few more minutes anyway coming off the bench. So I don't I don't think it's that big of a deal and again, for the Mavericks, y- Gafford's the perfect center to have, regardless of starter or Absolutely. backup, because he rebounds, he's relentless on the offensive glass, uh, and he catches lobs, which uh, you're going to get a lot of those playing with Luka Doncic. So, um, you know, I, I to your point, I think Lively probably ramps up to being a 25, 28-minute guy. Gafford's probably uh, in the low 20s, and that's how you split your minutes. And look, centers get hurt, so it's nice to have two starting caliber centers, so if one goes down, the other guy's ready to go, and... Uh, and step in, and this is likely your new starting five: uh, Doncic and Kyrie in the backcourt. Clay, uh, you're still wild. Team, at your Clay three, there. crazy, uh, and then PJ Washington and Derek Lively. Uh, grade this Mavericks starting five: A, B, C, D, or F. I think it's one of the best starting fives in the NBA. Coach. Agreed. It's I mean, I, I really think, good. I think the Mavs made significant improvement this offseason, and even if, like Nico Harrison said, Lively gets ten to fifteen percent better this year. You are that much better and that much scarier as a team in this Western Conference. And where some of your the teams around you got better, you got better as well. And look, I don't expect Lively to ever be a guy who's chucking three, four, five threes a game. But he might take two of if them. If he takes one and a half to two a game and is a 33 to 36% guy out there, imagine how much more spacing you're going to find in this offense, especially if there's more motion and movement in this offense, which... With Clay Thompson, I would expect there's going to be more off-ball movement. Yeah, that just creates even more openings for you know there are teams already have to pick their poison defending Luka Doncic. If you add one or two more avenues to where he can go and find solutions, good luck, man. I, I just don't see how you slow this team. I'll, down. I'll, I'll tell you this: the one three that he hit in the finals, it looked great. The form was good. It was nothing but net. I think he's going to be able to hit these at a semi-regular clip here in the NBA. I mean. He's been working on that shot all year. Yes. And, you know, teams are not going to guard that initially because, again, you have to pick your poison. But if he starts knocking them down and teams have to respect it, then your clay's open, lanes widen for Luka and Kyrie to try and get downhill. I mean, it just gets really difficult for teams uh, to defend this team. So Is the season here yet? Uh, you know, as much as I would like that, I would also like Luca to get some rest. Who, he by the way, thirty-seven played freaking minutes, thirty-seven minutes in a game. Slovenia got blown out, and this is going to sound harsh. I really hope they don't qualify. For I the agree. Olympics. And I know that sucks. And if Luca heard that, he'd probably be pissed off. But he's what twenty-five. He's going to have at least three more Olympics to play in. Plenty more FIBA he tournaments the to rest. play in. He's not healthy, guys. He needs to take a month off. Like. Seriously, go sit on the couch for a month, gain 20 pounds, I don't care, then get back to work and get ready for the season. Uh, On tomorrow's show, we'll have a couple of updated free agent targets that we're going to take a look at, so stay tuned for that, and we'll see you tomorrow on Mavericks Today. Peace.